Hello, welcome. My name is Lamy Singate and welcome to the Gatsby course. In this course, we're going to be using Gatsby to generate pages data stored in WordPress backend. So we are going to be using WordPress only for a headless CMS, meaning we're going to use WordPress just as a backend where we're going to have our contents here, for example, pages, contact calls, blogs, and stuff like that. And in the pages, we are just going to have just basic content all the styling will be done in Gatsby. We will be doing a lot in this course, focusing mainly on Gatsby. However, we will also be looking into WordPress development, how to build a headless theme, and how to build some layouting and some post types. We'll also be looking into plugins, custom field plugins, and how some of these custom fields plugins work. This is to help us to have clear, broad idea on how WordPress and Gatsby works all as a team. So without further ado, let's dive into Gatsby and set up our environment to start developing. So before we dive into Gatsby and WordPress development, we first need to set up our environment. To do so, we'll need some softwares and applications to install in our environment to work. First thing we will do is to download and install Node.js. All you need to do is go to nodejs.org and download their latest current version. Now that the downloaded file is completed, I'll go to my downloaded file, double click on it. And this will now prompt me a window for me to install it. Go next. I'll accept everything there. I'll go next. I'll accept it to be there. I'll go next. And I'll make sure that npm package is also enabled. So just leave it like that. And go next. Don't click on this because it's going to install unnecessary packages for you, which you don't need. And just go next and then install. Okay. So now that the installation is completed, now we are going to install Git on our computer. If you're following this course with a Mac, please just follow the Mac instructions. I'm using a Windows, so I'll just click on the, the latest version of Windows. Now that it's downloaded, I'll just click on it for it to open. I'll just say next, next, next throughout. And then install. So now the installation is completed. I'll just untick that and press next. I'll close this. So now we're going to open our command prompt and check if they are already installed, which is node and the chairs. So I'll say CMD and in here, I'm going to type node dash dash version. And this will give me that node is installed and you've got the latest version of that. Now we're going to test git. So I'll say git dash dash version. And it will tell me the latest version of Git. We also need to check our npm. So npm dash dash version, and then it will give us. So we have all. Uh, we have our npm. We have our Git. We have our Node. Now in the next video, we're now going to set up WordPress locally on our environment. Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to learn how to install Flywheel. Flywheel is going to be the local environment that we are going to set up for WordPress. Flywheel is one of the best made for WordPress. It's very, very simple to install WordPress. All you have to do is a couple of clicks. So we're going to use it so that everything is easy for you. However, I'll also make another video showing you how to install Exam. So in this, we're just going to go and Google local by Flywheel. Or just go to their website, flywheelwp.com. Now that you are on their website, just click on free download and select which device you have. I've got a Windows, so that's the one that I'm going to select. But please do select according to yours. So I'll just fill this information. Okay, so it's downloading. We'll just double click on it to open. Okay. So, um, I'll set it to anyone on my computer. 
to the access i'll accept and i'll just install it on my main local so now that we have this we'll just leave it ticked so that it can run it for us straight away so we'll just say finish and just hang fire a second for it to run it up okay we'll just accept okay so we'll just close this because it's just an advert now that we're here we're just going to create our first website so we'll say create so the website name we'll just call it about me okay so that's your website name and we'll just leave it to be preferred and we'll just put a username so i'll just say admin and on the password i'll say admin on the password and here i'll just change the email address to my email address now that i've put my email address i'll just say add website so now it's going to be building our website for us and when this building is completed we can directly access our wordpress so in a way you can literally build a website in a couple of seconds we'll just accept this accept as well allow however while it's doing this you can also add multiple websites you can add up to 5 10 20 websites in the same environment so this is all hosted locally for you so now that it's been installed now well, we we can view the website by click on view site and it's going to open us the website or we can just click on login to admin and it will bring us to the admin logins it might not bring this for you directly you might need to log in with the login that you've set up at the beginning so now that you have this now you can still access the files as well by coming back to the panel and you can just click on this arrow and this will open you your your website files in here you can go in apps public and in there you have all your wordpress files we'll look into this more as we go welcome back this video is mainly for people that don't want to use flywheel as you remember on the previous video we installed flywheel and tested and also installed wordpress in this video we are going to now install ZAMP and also install WordPress in ZAMP. This is for people that don't want to use a uh, flywheel and want to decide to follow the course with ZAMP. So we're going to come to ZAMP. So you're going to go apachesfriends.org and in their website, you choose according to your operating system. I've got a Windows, so I'm just going to download this. So now that the download is completed, I'll just click on it so that it can open for us to install it okay so in here i'll go next and i'll just leave everything as it is next and i'll leave it to be installed on my main local okay and i'll say next and i'll just close this because it's just an information box come back to the windows and here and let it install so while it's installing we might as well go and get WordPress files. So we'll come here and put in the browser and type wordpress.org. Please make sure it's .org because wordpress.com, this is a different service. This is WordPress providing you a service which you have to pay for. So make sure you are on wordpress.org. So now that you are here, you can download the files. While it's downloading, we can come back to our ZAMP to see how the installation is going. So it's still unpacking the files and installing it. So we'll just wait for everything to complete before we move forward. We have to accept this. Okay, so it's almost done now. So now that ZAMP is installed, we can just click on finish and make sure that this is already ticked so that it can open the panel for us automatically. So we'll just say finish. And we'll just select whichever country applies to us. We'll just say okay. Okay, so now this is our Apache ZAMP. So now we can start our Apache. Okay, so when it's green, that means that everything is okay. 
However, there might be some times that where you're going to have some port issues. So meaning there's another port that is running on 80. If you ever encounter a port issue, what you do is you'll come to configure and you click on the first option. And in there, you just need to look for 80. So if you say control F and look for 80, and you just need to change that port number to whichever port number you want it to. And as soon as you do this, this will fix your port issue. But however, if you're not facing this difficulty, you don't need to worry about it. So we'll start it again to make sure everything is running. And we'll just start the My MySQL as well. And we'll just say allow. Okay, so our server is all running. To test this, if everything is okay, we'll just go on the local host. So we'll just type local host. And when we tap local host, we can see that this is our local server. And within here, we can see our PHP, our database as well, where we can manage our database. So now that we have installed um, ZAMP, now let's actually upload the WordPress files as well. So now that you are here, you've got your panel, click on Explorer. So this will open the ZAMP files. Okay, so you here, you need to look for htdocs. Open htdocs and then stay there. Then go to your downloaded folder, open a new windows for your downloaded folder. Cont right click, cut, and then close that. And then right click, paste. So you've got your WordPress files now on your htdocs. Now right click extract here if you don't have a WRAR, um you might want to use a different um, one that you can use to uncompress things so now that i've unzipped this and this is the file i'll just delete the zip file because we don't need it anymore in here i'll change the name to about me so we have got our website called about me. Now, if we come back here to our local host and we say, we remove that and say about me, this will open our website for us. But however, we need to now configure our website. So we need to say yes. And now we need to create our database. So we'll come back to that localhost and then go to php my admin in php my admin i'll create a new database i'll call it about me and then i'll say create so now that i've created my about me I'll, what i always do is to create my privileges as well it's a very good practice to do this so i'll create a new privileges I'll call it the same name so that we are all safe about me. I'll leave everything the same. The password, set anything you want. Okay. Okay. Now that we have done this, we come down and check everything here and then come to go. So we have created our database and our username okay so now we go back to our database it's empty tables we don't need to worry about these empty tables because wordpress will create the fields and populate the data for us we'll come back here so now we we'll just say let's go so in here we just now need to fill the database informations that we have created here so here we'll say about me the username is about me and the password is whatever you have set it to and i'll leave everything else the same way so i'll say submit and it says everything is okay your wordpress is now ready to be installed and i run the installer so now i'm going to fill the information here about me and I'll say admin 
and the password will be admin2 as well. I'll say accept weak password and I'll put my email address. And I will say discourage for now the index of Google. And now I'll say install WordPress. So while it's doing this, I'll just come back to the database. As you can see, there's no population of data. When I refresh, it should now give me all the database populations and fields. So now our WordPress is now all set up. We can just log in with our login details that we created. Login. And this has bring us to our WordPress page. We will look into WordPress more as we go throughout the course. Welcome back to the Gatsby and WordPress course. In this video, we are now going to download our code editor. And the main code editor that we are going to use will be Visual Studio Code, in short, VS Code. So to get Visual Studio Code, you either go to code.visualstudio.com or you just Google the word VS Code. Go to their website and according to your operating system, just download it according to yours. So I'll have a Windows, I'll let it download. So now that it's downloaded, I'm just going to click on it and then accept and then I'll leave it to be installed there and then I'll leave it the same way I will click on all of these and then I'll install so now that Visual Studio Code is installed now we're going to open it so now that we have got Visual Studio Code now we need to install some extensions in Visual Studio Code so that we can use it with Gatsby development and React. So now I'll just make this bigger and I'll just zoom in to the extension part. And in here, we're going to look for a few extensions that we want to use. So the first one will be, we'll type React and React native React. This and then install and then the second one will be this one react native snippet okay now that that's done we need to now look for es lint which is already installed on mine. If it's not installed on yours, just click install. Then we will look for HTML snippet, which is already installed. We look for CSS snippet, which is already installed. Now that we have this, we'll look for GraphQL. Okay, we'll just install that. After that installation, we'll come to GraphQL, second one here, snippet for the highlighting text, and we'll click on that as well. So now that we have done everything, now we have fully set up our Visual Studio code and it's ready for us to start developing Gatsby with it. So we have now set up everything and we are now ready to get into Gatsby. So the first thing we do in Gatsby, we have to come to Gatsby website so that we can install Gatsby on our local. When you come to Gatsby website, you can click on either get started or you go on documentation. And when you're here, you need to click on tutorial. And in here in tutorial, you need to now select set up your environment and go below. So just to make sure that we have done everything that it's saying, we have installed node. So on the left here, click on use Gatsby CLI. We now need to install Gatsby CLI globally. So in here, we'll just copy this. We'll come here and search for the terminal. So we'll say CMD. So we'll just click on this. We just need to write npm install dash g cuts b dash cli 
okay and this will install Gatsby globally so we just have to wait so as you can see Gatsby is fully installed Gatsby is fully installed globally on our PC so now we need we need to now create a new project in Gatsby so to do this if you want you can come here and it will show you how to create a project and to create a project you have to say Gatsby new and the project the folder name that you want to create it to and if you want to use a template that is already ready from Gatsby you can just copy that but we are not going to use that we're just going to use the basic template of Gatsby now let's go and create our first Gatsby project we have to come back and open our terminal again and then what before we do anything we come here copy let's open a notepad and in the notepad we'll paste it there and here we'll just remove that and then we'll just come here and call the name that we want to create so we'll say about me dash Gatsby so now sorry Gatsby spelling Gatsby let's copy that copy go to the terminal and paste so now that you have paste you press enter and now this will create our Gatsby project for us it might take a bit of time to install all the packages so we just have to be patient with it I'll just make it bigger okay so as we can see we can tell that everything is installed and everything is fine there's some warnings that you will see some dependencies you don't need to worry about that for now so what we'll do now is we'll say cd and go to our root before we run anything let's actually open Gatsby project and see what kind of folders we have in Gatsby so what we'll do here we'll say code space dot now that we do this it will open in Visual Studio code and in here you can see that our Gatsby project is here and we have all our notes files which I will explain in the next video and all our packages or our components our images and pages so now to test that everything is run and installed properly and compiled let's build our project to do this we need to come to terminal we need to say Gatsby developed now this is going to build our project for us okay so we're just going to allow it so it has built all our project for us now to view our website in Gatsby this is the link so we'll just press control and click on this link when you do that this is going to open it for you on your browser so when you come to the browser you will find that it's on localhost 8000 and this is your Gatsby first page just to check to make sure that this is all working you can see there's page one page two and when we go back to our Gatsby project we can come to pages and we can see that's page one page two if you see we can change something there let's change something on it say just say hi how are you and let's save it and let's go back to our browser and refresh if you can see it's hi how are you welcome back to the Gatsby and WordPress course in this video we're now going to create on our WordPress site a headless theme so how to do this we'll first start our project to make sure that everything is running in our project we'll save view and I'll just drag it here and we'll see that this is our WordPress so we'll try and log in WP dash admin and it's admin admin okay so we see that everything is okay so now what I will do now is I'm just gonna minimize this and I'm going to come back to the flywheel so I'll look at the folder and then I'll go to apps public and that's the files now I'll go to in WP content themes in here 
I'll create a new theme. And this time I'll call it headless dash theme dash cat. Okay, so this is our headless theme. In here, we're now going to create some PHP files to make it function as a theme. To do this, we'll first need to open this folder in Visual Studio Code. So the quickest way to do this is open cm in the command prompt. And in the command prompt, you need to locate this file. So we'll just come here, back here. We go on themes. And in, in our terminal, we'll say cd. And then we'll drag the theme in there. And we say enter. So now we have located our file, our, our root file for where we want the theme to go. We'll say code space dot. And when we do this, this is going to open Visual Studio Code with our project for us. So what we do here is we create a new file within the project. So as you can see, when you click, it opens within here. We'll click on this arrow, which is a new file. And in this, we'll call it index.php. So we have created our first PHP file. Then we'll create our function as well. So we'll choose the function dot php the function is where we will create all our post types in but we'll do this later let's create all our files first then we're going to create our style dot css okay now that we have done this we now need to create few other bits we need to create ourselves an image a screenshot which will be represented there I've already pro uh, provided myself a screenshot, so I'm just going to paste it in. I'm just going to go and get it and drag it in here. You can go and get this off the internet if you wish. Okay, so we have our PHP file, we have our index file, we have our screenshot image, and we have our style. So this is enough to create a theme within WordPress. However, we now need to put some PHP codes within the function the index and we need to put some information in the style sheet as well so let's start with the index page first so in here we're going to open our php and then close it that's all we need to do so we will say php we need to make sure it doesn't give us this advices and then we do that okay that's all we need in the index file so we'll just save that. You can say Control S or File Save. Now that we did this, we need to go on the function. We need to do the same. We'll come back on the function later. So now that we're here, we'll go to the style. In the style, we need to put some informations there so that the theme can pick the informations. The style res responsible to give the WordPress and give a bit more idea to WordPress what this theme is all about. For example, the name of the theme, the author of the theme, the descriptions, the versions of the theme, and the text domain. So what we'll do here, we'll first say add sign in here, and we'll say a char set, and then in between there, we'll say utf dash eight okay and then we'll close that and in between that we will do a comment so we'll do that and in there we're going to write a few details the first thing we want is the theme name so we'll say theme name and this will be head less Word, WordPress theme okay and then we'll just put the author the author will be me Lamin Singate 
and then we're going to write the author's URL and that will be lamtutorial.com and then we're going to have the description in description we're going to say this is a headless WordPress theme build for Gatsby okay now we have this now we need to do requires so that means we need to put the WordPress version so we'll say require at list at least what is the newest version so we'll just say WordPress 4.9.6 so it needs that to be able to run so this is our first version so we'll say version 1.0 and then license so we'll just say the license will be C license will be G and U that's the capital G and U general public license V2 or later okay we have the license in so we'll just put another license in L I see I'll just copy the word so that I don't make any spellings mistakes okay so and then in here I'll just paste that as well and here will be a URL in URI sorry and it will be the answer to that will be that and then in here we'll have the text domain text domain will be Gatsby okay we save this so we have a function we have a index and we have our yeah, screenshot and we have information that WordPress is going to pick now we're going to go back to our WordPress okay in here so we'll just go on view website okay we'll just make sure we are logged in so okay now we come back to themes and in themes if you notice you can see that we have a theme here it says headless wordpress theme and if you click on this it will give you a few information of the things that we have just done so we've created few information and you've seen that so we can activate this and now you have created your first wordpress headless theme so let's have a look a few other things let's check in it and see more details of the theme as you can see we have that we have the version one ah so i can notice that there are some informations that are probably spelled wrong and they're not giving us the correct information here so we'll just go back to the yeah, air we'll come to styles uh, so you can see here on the author there's two duplication of author one needs to be author url and the other one is just author so we'll just say you are url just like that to make sure everything seems to be okay you're right and that's fine and then we'll look the description is correct that's fine the require is fine uh, so you can see that there's some misspelling mistakes here so I'll just make sure that that spelling mistake is right so it's correct now yeah so everything seems to be okay so if I save this and we go back to our WordPress so we'll just refresh this and you can see that there's a link here now so when I click on this link, it will take us to the website. As we have now created our WordPress headless theme for Gatsby, now it's time for us to get into the plugins in WordPress. And these plugins are going to be the WP REST API plugins that we are going to use to fetch few data and post types. So I have created 
some plugins already and these plugins are the WP REST API and the WP REST Favica. So we're going to install these two plugins so that we can use GraphQL in Gatsby to fetch the Favicon and logo within WordPress. To get this, you need to follow this URL because I have created this plugin so you won't be able to get it off the internet. So you need to go to that URL and download these plugins. When the plugins are downloaded, unzip the plugin, copy the plugin files, come back to your flywheel and then open the folder your directory open it apps public wp content plugins and paste in there so now that you have pasted this there go back to your wordpress plugins and you've got them here so let's activate them okay now we need to install a few other plugins the first plugin that we are going to install now is going to be the advanced custom fields fields so we look for advanced custom fields and then we install this one now we activate it we go back to it and now we need to look for another plugin and this time we're looking for admin menu editor and then we'll install it we will activate it okay we'll add one more plugin which is the WP REST API menu so we'll just search for that WP REST API menu v2 we can select okay we activate it now we have installed our REST API menu our REST API logo our REST API favicon and the advanced custom fields and then we have also installed the menu now there's one more we need to install which is the advanced custom field api itself so that gatsby can actually fetch the advanced custom fields that we have also we also going to have so we'll just go add another one to advanced custom fields to rest advanced custom fields okay and we'll just select the first one and then we'll activate it so now we have installed our rest api menu our rest api logo our rest api favicon our advanced custom fields our admin menu editor and our advanced custom fields rest api now let's go ahead and create a custom post type and this time we're going to call it portfolio so we'll come to our fly flywheel and click on our files we fetch where the file is public and then themes in here we want to open this with our code editor so as you remember we'll say cmd open cmd and then cd space come there drag it there and there enter then types code dot and this is going to open it for you now i'll just make this bigger in functions we're going to write our function in here and the function that we are going to write is going to be the one that creates all our post types for us and this time we'll only need one post type so what we'll do is we'll say add theme support and in there we'll then put the custom plugin that I've created the custom logo so we'll say custom dash logo and then we'll copy this paste it twice and then in here we'll change that to menus and this one will be pull thumbnails now let's create our function so to do the function we'll say function and we create our post type so we'll say create custom and then we'll call it a name so we'll say 
portfolio post type and then we'll open our quality bracket and in our quality bracket we put a register so we'll say register underscore post underscore type and in there we will then say I want it to be a portfolio and then we'll say an array and in the array we'll say label and the labels are going to be an array so we'll say array and in there we're now going to write our labels names so the first one is going to be name and the second one is going to be singular name so now that we have this now we need to declare them so it's going to be that in bracket we need to now say put Folio. I'll just copy that, paste it there, and then up here I'll just do that, and then I'll do that. Now that we have declared our names, now we'll just press enter, and then close the array. Now let's declare a few things. We want it to be public, so we'll say public. We want it to show in the admin bar, so we'll say show underscore in underscore admin underscore bar. Okay, then we will want it to show in the REST API so that we can use GraphQL to fetch the post type. So we'll say show underscore in underscore REST. Okay, now we need to now put them all as true. So we'll say true and I'll just copy that and paste to all of them. Okay, so now that we have that, now we come out of here and then close that. Okay, now we need to do one more thing. Well, two more things. The first thing is we need to add a thumbnail and a shirt. A thumbnail is basically, you know, representing this page has an image, so they will show an image in it. We'll be able to upload each portfolio an image. And then we'll be able to add an excerpt, so a sentence which people can see before they see the actual portfolio. So to add this, we'll say add underscore post underscore type underscore, we'll say support. And in the support, we're going to call the portfolio so we'll say portfolio and when we call the portfolio we're going to now create an array of things that we wanted to have so we'll say an array and in the array we wanted to have first a thumbnail so it's going to be thumbnail and then we wanted to have this up so we'll say e Sorry, accept, and then that's that. So we'll close this. So just to recap, we've added the thumbnail, we've added the accept, we've said we want this to show in the public, we want it to show in the admin bar, we want it to show in the REST API, we want the name to be portfolio, we want the singular name to be also portfolio, and we want you to register all of this. Now, outside the outside the function we're going to now make an action so that it can actually work so we'll say add action and then in there we're going to now in it and out of there we're going to call our function and this is our function so we'll copy this okay and out of it we'll close this so we've called our action, we called the init, we've called this, so now we just need to put that in the quotation. Okay, so it looks better. 
so everything seems to be okay here so i'll just save this okay now let's add a, a template as well while we're here so we'll just create a new template and we call it portfolio dot php okay in here we're now going to open our php and then we're going to close our php and in here we're going to now put a comment and this comment will take the the name of our portfolio so it will be template name and it will be portfolio okay and then it will be sorry also let's just put a lowercase also and that will be me i mean Okay, and out of there we'll close the comment okay so this basically this template name wordpress will pick it up so that when we're selecting a template it will show us this is the template so you can select the template name so we'll save all of this make sure everything is okay here and then now we're going to run into our wordpress and see if everything is actually working so we'll refresh yes so we have a portfolio already so we've created our portfolio post type so we'll just click on it and you can see that it gives us space here we can add a new portfolio okay so we'll just this is an editor the new wordpress editor so we'll just ignore that so we can put our data here we will come here and then you can see that there's a feature image there's an excerpt as i told you before and then you can put some details of the blocks and stuff like that so we have created this post type now before we go back to gatsby let's first populate some data on our backend wordpress backend so we'll be able to populate this data in gatsby so there's an easier way of doing it rather than us creating one by one pages and putting content in the easy way is getting an epsilon load and plugin so if you go to plugins add a new plugin and then just look for epsilon wordpress and it's that one activate it so now it's activated now in here we can actually populate data in it so what we'll do we'll say we want five different posts and we want it let's first make the blocks so we'll say blocks let's say we want three paragraphs we want it to be published and we want author to be admin and we want it to have a thumbnail as well so we send okay so that's done now let's go to post and see if it's if it's actually populated the data so we click on post and yes everything seems to be populated so these are the epsilon data that it has populated for us so i'll just click on one just to check yeah and it has given us some titles and paragraphs and we have some images here as a thumbnail so everything seems to be okay so we're going to go back and populate some more for the pages and populate some more for the for the portfolio section as well so what we do we come back we go to settings and we click on epsilon so in here now we're going to now select we want it to give us a um, let's say four pages and let's say five paragraph each and let's say publish and let's say admin and give us a thumbnail as well for each so we could do that so that's done now let's do the let's do another one and this time let's wait for portfolio and let's have three paragraphs for each on the portfolio and let's have it as published admin thumbnail and let's do that okay so all is done let's just go and check if everything is okay we've already checked on the post and we've seen it's okay so we'll check on the blogs so yes we have some stuff there but what we'll do here is we'll change some bits here we'll just change the url names so the first one we'll call it home 
page and we'll just call it home we'll just call it home and then the second one we'll call it about us and we'll just about us so we'll just have it that way and then we'll just call this one contact us just get rid of the dash and contact us and then we'll just copy that actually copy that one and paste it in here and update and the last one will just say web development okay copy that and paste it in the URL okay so we have this let's just delete these two pages which we don't need so now that we have populated our data using epsilon now let's do one final thing on wordpress which is we are going to now go and look for a logo and a favicon to use in our um, in our gatsby project so we want to have the logo and the favicon in the wordpress backend that we are going to pull using graphql so i already have a logo so i'm just you can go and google any logo if you have any so to do this we're going to come to customize so in customize we're going to go to site identity and then i'll go to my files and then i'm going to go on my desktop and then upload this to load this to one is a favicon and one is a logo and then say select and then i'll open the logo as wide as i want it to be and then i'll crop it so we have our logo and i'm going to change the favicon then that's the favicon okay so we have our favicon now i'm going to change the title so i'll say about me gatsby and here this will be gatsby project dash wordpress head CMS and then I'll save this so now we have done everything that we need to do for now on WordPress now let's move to Gatsby now we need to install Gatsby plugins into our project we need to install the WordPress plugin into our project so that we can use GraphQL to pull or query the data so Gatsby comes with loads of plugins which you can come to their website plugins and you will find loads of plugins most of the plugins comes with documentations and this documentation shows you how to use them and how to install them and add them into your project so first we're going to come here we search for wordpress and we need to install a gatsby source wordpress into our project so we'll come down to installation and we need to copy this piece of code we go back to our Gatsby project and in our Gatsby project I'm just gonna make this bigger go to new terminal and in here we need to paste what we're looking for and then it's gonna run and install everything for us so let's just wait for that now that the installation is completed, we need to add some settings into our Gatsby config. So when you install any Gatsby plugins into your Gatsby project, it just doesn't work straight away. You still need to configure it into the Gatsby config file because otherwise it's not going to work. So we'll click on our Gatsby plugin file. And then as you can see, there's already helmets. There's already plugins that are already been um, installed and configured this is done automatically from the theme that we installed when we were installed in Gatsby so now what we have to do to get the settings for the WordPress one we now need to go back to the site and the Gatsby site and in here we now need to scroll down and we will see now the settings are here as you can see so we need to copy everything 
So as you can see the plugins, so just after the plugins, we need to copy everything just after the plugins. There you go. So that's everything just after the plugins. As you can see, the plugin starts here and ends there. So we just copy the internal bit. So we come back to our project and just after here, we paste everything. These are loads of settings that we will probably not touch, but it's safer to have everything here so that if we need it, we know that we have to go. So these notes and these comments are just explanations of each of these code, what it does. So now what we have to do is we need to now go to our WordPress and copy the WordPress URL and paste it in here. So we'll go back to our WordPress site, which is here. So we'll say view site, and then we're going to copy. So if we just remove that for a second and then do that, so we see that that's our WordPress. So we'll copy that, go back, and then in here, in URL, we'll remove that and paste, and we'll remove that, and we'll remove that, okay? And in here, we'll remove the HTTPS because it's not HTTPS. We'll leave everything else the same, so that's fine. Everything else is fine. Okay, so we'll save this for now. And let's run everything to make sure that everything is connected with our Gatsby and WordPress. So we'll just come on the terminal. So I'll just open the terminal a little bit bigger. I'll just close this so we have more space. I'll clear. Okay. So now we are going to type a few commands to run the Gatsby. So to run Gatsby, you have to say Gatsby develop. Now it's going to build our project and we'll see if everything is okay. If everything is okay, we should be able to go to our GraphQL and pull out the data. I can tell automatically everything it should be okay because as you can see, it's pulling, it's fetched the advanced custom fields data, the pages. As you can see, it's already fetched all of this for us, so which is great. So now let's go and query some data. Control and click on localhost 8000 slash underscore underscore GraphQL. This is going to open us GraphQL. GraphQL is a form of a, a form of a query tool which you can use to query data from another source. So in this time, the source will be WordPress. So I'll just remove everything. So what we do, how GraphQL works is you can do two ways of querying data. You can either come this side and you can see them here. So for example, if we want to look for the pages, so we can come two ways. Either we control space and this is going to tell us we want a query. And then we close that query. And in between control space, then we'll say all WordPress page, okay, and in there we'll say control space, we'll say edges, and then in there we'll say node, and in there we'll now query the data that we want. So what we want here is we want the title, we want the excerpt, we want, if there is any excerpt, we want it. We want the content. We want the image, so it will be feature media. And we want the source of the image. So we'll say source of the image, so source URL. And let's query this first. So if we run it, on the right side, you can see it's giving us the pages. It's giving us the accept, it's giving us the content, it's giving us the image, the featured image, which is the thumbnail, and it's giving us all the pages that we have, as you can see, itself. Let's do a few more queries, so let's remove this. The second way of doing a query, as I said to you before, there is two ways. 
is you can actually click on what you're looking for through coming here. So as we have done the pages before, now let's do the post. So as you can see here, it says all WordPress post. So I just need to click on all WordPress post. And then you can see that it's making the query automatically for us. And then I can click on edges and I can click on nodes. And then here I can select what I'm looking for. So I can select, I want a title. I want the excerpt. I want the content. So we we'll look for content. I want the image. So image will be in featured media. So I click on that. I'll say I want the image. Where is it? Source. Yeah. Source URL. And then we have that. I can also say I want the slog, which is the URL. We'll work with the slog later on. So we'll just run this. And when we run this, we can see that we get the post. So in here, we got the post name. We got the served. We got the content. We got the featured image, which is the thumbnail. And we got the slog. And it's giving us all of the blocks. Okay. So now, um, just one more thing we need to observe. So as you can look, as you can look here, you won't be able to find the portfolio, the post all WordPress portfolio. This is because we need to add the directory on our config file. So we'll go back to our config file. So we'll just reduce that. First, let's stop our Gatsby from running. So we'll press Control C and this will stop. And then I'll just move that down. Now what we have to do is in here, we have to add the directories and these directories are going to be pinpointed to where they are. So we need to add three directories to be honest. The first one is going to be the portfolio one. So let's just copy that and let's just paste in. And now we'll just change this to portfolio. And now we'll just change this to portfolio. Okay, then we'll just paste another one. And this time we just need to change the inner bit here. In here, we're going to say slash star slash star slash logo. This is going to bring the logo API. Then we'll have another one. And this time we'll say slash star slash star slash and we'll say favicon okay so now we have done that let's save this and let's come to the terminal and run our application again so we'll say gatsby develop okay so now that it's finished running Let's go back to our GraphQL and try to query the portfolio, the menu, and uh, Favicon. So I'll just control and click. We come back here. If you can notice, look, the Favicon is here, the logo is here, and you have the portfolio. So we can query the portfolio by just clicking on it. Edges, Notes, and in here we can query the title, the excerpt, the content, the featured image, which will be your URL, and we can even get this log as well. Okay. Actually, we don't want the feature, it's the slug of the featured image. We just want the slug outside. Yes. So we'll just click on that. And if you can see, this is giving us the portfolio. Okay. Now, Let's remove this and now let's try and look at the, the logo. So click on the logo, edges, notes, and here we just select URL and in URL we just say source URL and we run this and you can see the logo directory. Okay. So we are fetching everything, right? So we'll remove that, we we'll try and fetch the favicon as well to make sure the favicon is as well working. So we'll just go and look for the favicon, edges, 
sorry, edges, nodes, URL, and source URL. And then we run this. It's giving us the favicon as well. Okay, so we have everything that we need. Now the first thing is we need to create our pages and our query. To do this, we need to work on the Gatsby node file. So we'll come back here, just reduce that. We'll click on Explorer and we'll click on Gatsby node. If you can see, it's empty. We're going to write a lot of code here. We're going to populate everything here. So first we need to understand that the Gatsby WordPress plugin, which we have installed and configured in Gatsby config, actually comes with a Gatsby Node.js sample. So if you go to their site and we'll be able to see the Gatsby Node sample. However, the way this sample is done is not going to benefit us a lot. But you can go and read about it more. I have created my own sample, which you can go to this link, which is http lamtutorialcom material slash gatsby dash nodejs. Go and copy that and use that code. And this is how the code looks like. Okay, so you're going to go and copy everything here and bring it in, copy. Then let's bring it in in our code. So in your notes, Gatsby notes, JS, copy everything, paste it in here. So we have everything that we need. So I will explain every stage that I, what I've done and the alterations that I've done, but also I've left some comment there so that you can understand what each and every line does. So as you can see, this is us creating our variables, our constants. And these constants are declared on each and individual step. So we created a redirect so that we don't have to use a home page anymore in our pages. So we don't need the index page anymore. So we created a redirect stating that anytime that we, it goes to the root, the root will redirect to the, to the WordPress homepage. And we made this to be in browse through and it to be permanent for now. If we don't want the redirect, we can just remove it. Then if we remove it, then we need to remove this constant as well. So we carry on. We created a return promise, which it's referencing from that. And we resolve with the rejected. We created our GraphQL query. So we nested our GraphQL query within our Gatsby project. So if we just copy this, just to make sure we have everything, and we go to our GraphQL, and run this, we can see that it's giving us some results. Okay, so which is great. So now that we have created a GraphQL, we then put an output of an error. So that means that if there is any error, it can read this, it gives us an error and tells us exactly where the error is. So it console the error for us. After that, we created a constant called page template. And this page template is where it's going to reference the pages from. At the moment, we don't have this template. So we'll come back here. Let's just minimize everything and come back into there. And it, within there, we create another folder. We cl click on this new folder and we call it template. So I'll just go and copy that and new folder and paste that templates. So now we have our templates. Within templates, we need an, a page called page.js file. So we'll click on add a new file and then we paste that. Okay. We'll work on these pages later, but at least we have got the, the, the page set up. So now that it's done, we need another one. We need another one called constant portfolio on the content template. This will be where the portfolio widgets are going to be. So we'll create another one and call it new file and then call it pay a portfolio on the content of chairs. So we have done that as well. So we close that. So now we create our for each loop. Our for each loop is going to come from this constant and each for each loop will result and collect the WordPress data, which is this and collect the edge, which is that 
and you can see it called the edge and now we saying edge will then create the constant for us so it's creating a slug and the path of the slug is the dollar sign the edge dot no dot slug let's see if that's correct edge dot no dot slug that's correct so then we'll create our component our component will then say give us a slash this slash is coming from the top bit here okay, sorry this one here and within the slash we then say give us so what we want is we want it to give us the portfolio um on the content and the portfolio template at the same time okay if there is any if there is none it's not going to give us it okay so now that we have that we've created our pages section the page section is completed now we can create our um our graphql for the post which is exactly the same but the only difference is we rather than creating a new export from scratch we use the same exports and just use the then method to create the other ones we create our graphql we put our result um our results for the errors so if there's any error we create a new path so we'll just go and create a new file as well and within that file we'll then create we'll then say new file and then put the post shares there close that and we create our forage loop the post the edge and we create our slug we create our component the component is coming from there which is select which is specifying the path and the context is what is going to pick the data of each which we will work on the context later and this will then resolve it so we don't really need to kind of bring in an error so it just resolves it which is return we do the same for the portfolio and within the portfolio we need to create another another page called portfolio file and then we've created the portfolio file so we close that and the portfolio file is doing the same exactly the same okay so this is creating the pages dynamically from WordPress within your Gatsby. So we'll save this. So, so now that the Gatsby node is done, let's go to pages and put some stuff in our pages, a um, page.js file. So in the page.js file, first we need to import the React. So we'll say import React and it's going to come from React. Okay. If you don't know how um, React works, basically, if you want to write a React code, um, you need to first import the React in your file and then work on it. So now that that's done, we want the template. So we need header and the footer. And the template is coming from here, layout. So we'll import that as well. So we'll say import and we'll say the layout will come from, will come from dot dot slash component slash layout so now that is done now we're going to produce our output to create an output we'll say export and we create our default and within the default we're just going to add we're just going to bring in the page context if you remember page context so this context is going to pick it from there so we'll say page context okay and outside of it we'll now create our layout so we'll bring that layout which is this to bring that in we have to say layout and within that we can put our a um, our title our content from wordpress so we'll say the header one will be our content so because the header one might have some html so let's bring in a dangerous um dangerous in html so we'll say dangerous set in html and then in there we're going to now create a few things we first need to bring in our html and within the HTML, we're going to now go and pick what we want. So we want the title. So it will be page context. 
dot the title and then we want the content so then we'll then close this and after that we'll bring a div tag and within that div tag we'll bring another dangerous and we'll say underscore underscore and within that we'll say page context and this time it will be content okay and then we do that we close that so we have created that and close the, the output so we have created our pages page so if i save this now let's go and create let's copy everything here and let's go and do the same for portfolio and post as well so we're gonna come here paste on portfolio ignore the portfolio on the content for now because we need to do a few things for that so we just put the post as well so the post will have that but within the post we can do another thing for the post we can bring the image uh, within that as well but we'll we'll do that in a minute so we have all of this cool so now let's try and run our application and try and fetch one of the pages so just control c twice and then run it again okay so there seems to be an error so let's just see where the error is coming from so it's saying in the property if we just go back to the node in the node we go on portfolio yes so there is an advanced custom field that we haven't created so while advanced custom field that we haven't actually created for the portfolio url actually let's go and do that now so that it's done and dusted so we'll come here to our local uh, website wordpress and then log into the back end and then we come here to advanced custom fields we create a new group and in this group we'll call it let's call it the same name as what we have here so we'll just call it url okay and this will be a new group and we'll call it field url same thing and in here we'll have it as a link so we'll just call it url and the url is that and we'll just take it it's gonna go to the portfolio one as you can see and that's that so we'll just publish that so now that we have the url created so if we go on the portfolio we click on any of them when we scroll down we can find the url here so i will say www.google.com i'll just copy that save that just wait for it to save okay so now that's done come back and i'm going to open that open that and open all of them so that we can edit them so then this one i'll paste it again on here so we don't need to come back to it again paste it here as well and paste it here as well okay so now we have created everything that we need here we can just literally just go back to our code and leave everything the way it is because we have now created our advanced custom fields in the portfolio so now let's just rerun this application and hopefully we shouldn't get a lot of errors anymore okay everything running successfully so far yes everything seems to be great so as you can see everything has run perfectly fine so we're just waiting for it to finish up so everything has run we can just click and control to go to the site and you can see the home page is giving us the home page i'll just control minimize so that you can see things properly so you see it's giving us everything on our home page so let's just do some few tweaks on our home page so we'll go back to our wordpress site portfolio so i'll just go to pages and this you see i spelled home page wrongly so we'll just fix that and then we'll just come here and then do some bits of changes here let's add some images 
let's just do it here maybe um, we'll just search for images and let's see what image is available for us here so let's just choose that one update that and now that we update that we need to rebuild our application again so we'll just close this build our application again okay so it seems to be running fine we'll just come back to it and go to our Gatsby and let's just check if it's finished yeah it is finished and then let's just refresh this and if you can see it's bringing our image so everything is coming from WordPress now let's try and see if we can get to the portfolio so if we say portfolio you see it's not giving us anything so that means that we need to create the portfolio page as well so we'll just come back to WordPress and what we'll do is we'll come to settings we'll come to the epsilon and then we'll populate one page which is going to be a page and this one is going to be a the paragraph we'll just see a random paragraph publish and it's going to be in the admin and it's going to have a thumbnail so now that this is done let's go back to our pages and in here we have our new one here so let's change that and change it to portfolio so we'll just make that as capital and we just remove this and update that so now that we have this if we check the slug the slug will be portfolio so we'll just leave it that way we go back to our project and within our project we're just gonna um, rerun our application so we're gonna press ctrl c and then we're gonna get to develop again and then enter okay let's just give it a minute so that it can run yes so let's just say yes because there might be another application running okay it's almost done now so now that that's done now let's go and check if the portfolio page has been created so in here i'm just going to change that word and i'm going to call it portfolio and if you can see we have a portfolio page now that we, all this is done now it's time for us to now design you know our gut space so that it can look better so i have made a strategy so first thing we're going to do is we're going to design our header and then we're going to put the menus in we're then going to add our uh, information so the information is going to come from the customized and within customized we'll have our site title here site title and the tag which is going to come from there we're going to bring the favicon we're going to bring this favicon to our site as well um, and then we're going to design the footer so this is the first thing we're going to do so let's go ahead and start that okay so i'll just minimize this i'll minimize this as well and we don't need this for now we'll just close our application for now we don't need the application running to start the first thing we need to do is we need to work on the layout and within the layout we are going to remove everything here and we are going to create our layout which is going to involve the header and the footer and the body of the content so the body will entitle the the pages and everything else so first thing we're going to do let's create our our components first without putting anything in it so first thing we need our logo so we'll create a new component and we'll call it logo.js okay then we need another one we need a main menu so we'll call it main menu.js that's the menu then we'll need the site information which is going to pick the site title and description so we're going to call it site info.js so now we have the site info the menu the logo and the layout these are the four things we need to create our other our header and footer so let's go to this one first the the layout within the layout we're gonna remove everything that is there so first let's remove this and then let's remove this because we will need that and then let's remove everything else that is there okay so now we have this now 
Let's start writing more content. First, we need to import the menu within the layout. We haven't put anything in the menu, but let's just import it as we go. So we'll say import main menu. And we're going to say it's from dot slash main menu. Okay. So now we need to add our GraphQL and start a query. So here, let's just remove that. And then within here we say comma and then we add our static query so which is the static query there and then we'll close that so now we have our static query we have our menu we have our react now we need to add a few more things first we need to add our helmet the helmet is the one that is going to pull the side um, icon the favicon and it's going to pull this side information so we're going to say import helmet and it's going to be from and this time it's going to be react helmet okay so now the next we need to import the style component before we do this firstly we need to check if we already have the style component in our config file because if we don't we need to go and install it so first we'll come to our config file and in here we need to look for style component. So as you can see, we have that, we have the transformer, we have the sharp, but we don't have the style component. So we need to add the style component within our, within our code. But so the first thing to do is we're going to go back to the browser and we go to Gatsby website and within Gatsby, we go to plugins. And then we'll need to search for style component. So we'll say style component. Okay, so it's here, which is Gatsby plugin style component. Then we'll copy all of this. Copy and go back to our code. And then open the terminal. We need to make sure that the code isn't running. So control C to make sure nothing is running and then paste the code here so now that's completed now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we referenced it in our code as you remember when you install anything within your Gatsby you need to also reference it here so what we can do is we first go to our Gatsby again and then go to the plugin and just copy that name okay now that we have that name we need to reference it in our configuration. So in here, we're just going to paste it in there and then we're going to do a comma. So now this has referenced it for us and then we save this. Now we can close our, our config file. Now let's go back to the layout. Within the layout, we're going to import now the style component. So we're going to say import styled. Then we're just going to create a variable so we'll say create global style so this will be the global style and we're gonna say from and this will be from the style components okay so all done our imports are all completed now let's start typing in our, our constant so let's do a bit of a styling first so we'll first create our global um, our global style so we'll say a constant and we'll say it's global. So global style, let's just remove that. So global style will be equals to create global style. And now let's do our styling in here. Now within the style, let's add our font. So I'll go get an import. So I'll say import me a font and it should be a url and within that url i want it to come from google font so i'll just go and get a google font url copy that and paste you can go to google font and copy any url that you desire and then i'll close that now i want to style the body and the html so we'll say body and then we'll say html and within the HTML, we're going to write three styles. We're going to have the font family now 
the font family will reference this that we have so we'll say font dash family and within the family we'll call the open sans so we'll say open sans and within the open sans we need to reference this so we can pick them up and space then we need to write our sans serif yeah i hope the spelling is right and then we need to now write our margin so we'll say there is a margin of zero and it's auto and then we need to do our pattern so we'll just make the pattern to be zero as well and auto as well um actually what we can do because this might be overwritten let's do this so let's make it important so let's say important and let's remove this and let's make it important okay so now we have styled our constant this is the global styling for everything then let's do a few things let's create our wrapper so this wrapper will surround the whole content within our site so let's create a constant and this time let's call it a layout let's call it wrapper layout wrapper and this will be a styled and it will be a div tag that we're styling this time so now within the div tag we need to put our styles in there and we first want a max width the width will be 960 let's say and then the margin let's say will be zero and it will be out as well now let's create our queries so within the queries we first need to create our constant and this one will be the main layout and this will be within that we need to open our bracket okay and in that let's bring in the children so we'll say children and we'll say space and then we're just going to bring in the bracket outside the bracket we're going to export everything that we do export default layout okay so now that's done within that we now need to start writing our code within that so the first thing is we let's do our div tags and we write everything within that div tag so first let's do a query so let's bring our static query so static query and the static query is going to be a query and we're going to query in graphql so the first thing is let's query the, the graphql so we let's query the favicon actually let's start with the favicon so let's go back to our graphql so we first need to run everything but because we have put it down already and if we run this right now everything will be broken down and the site will not be running properly so we have to finish this to be able to run the site but i have already memorized the query already so i will just write the query but you will have to if you're doing this from scratch you might have to go to the graphql and do the query just to make sure that the query is working but what i'll do for me i'll put in there I'm gonna write my query, so I'll say all all WordPress favicon, and within this favicon, I'm going to now declare the edges, and within the edges, I want the node, and within the node, I want the URL, and within the URL, I want the source underscore URL. Let's just check this word if it's spelling mistakes. All WordPress. You see there. WP. So all WordPress WP favicon. Okay. And edges, nodes, and then we have our source. We now need to render. So we'll just say render. And we'll bring in our props. So we're gonna say props will be equals to a helmet. So we're gonna bring in the helmet which is that one and then that's that within the helmet we're gonna bring in the favicon now so first 
let's press and enter and within that let's write our link so we'll say link and we'll say it's real and within the real we're going to reference everything there so we're going to say it's an icon first and outside that we'll just say it's a harif and now we need to reference the harif so the harif is going to be the props dot and we're going to go and get all wordpress paste it here dot then we're going to go and get the edges so edges then within the edges we want the first thing so which will be zero and outside of it we need the node we need the node dot we need the url and then we need the source underscore url okay so now we have this outside that we can close this and our link is done so everything seems to be okay so we have the props dot we have the wordpress favicon dot just taking it from the edges it's picking the first one bringing us the node the url on that so that's completed so we have the favicon now done now let's just close this as well and now let's bring in our menu as well we haven't designed our menu yet but we will do this later on so we bring in our menu now let's bring in our wrapper, our styles that we did. So we'll say layout wrapper. And within the wrapper, we're going to now bring in our children. The children will be the content that is coming from the pages, the posts and stuff. So we'll say children. And that's that. We need to do one more thing. We need to bring in the global. So we'll say global style and the global style in as well so we have everything that we need we have our export default yeah so everything here seems to be okay so we'll just save that now let's go to the main menu and let's create our main menu so we first import everything as we did before so let's just go back to layout and import everything here and paste that there and let's just check if everything is there that we need we definitely don't need the menu anymore okay so we have the react we need to add a few more things here because we're gonna have a menu and this will be linked so we bring in the link and then we don't need the helmet anymore in here so we'll just remove the helmet we need this style component, but we don't need it in a way that it creates the global style. So we'll just say import style from style component. Now we need to import two more things. We need to import the import and let's bring in the site info, which we created. Again, we haven't done anything with them yet. So we'll say dot site info, that one there. And then we bring in the logo as well. So we'll say import logo from dot logo. Okay. So now we have all of this. Let's do some design work. So first let's create a constant. So we'll just say main menu wrapper. And that wrapper will be a styled div tag and within that div tag we're going to do all our styling in and this time we're going to say display make it flex so which means it's going to make it flexible and let's create a background so we'll say background color and then here let's go and get a background color so i am going to open my logo and pick the logo color so that's my logo i'm gonna drag it in photoshop you don't need to have photoshop to do this you can use any tools or if you already know your color just pick your color i'm only using this because that's the um that's i don't know my color so i just came here to pick it up so in here so that's my hex code i'm gonna copy my hex code and then I'm going to go back to my code 
and then I'm going to paste it here. In here I'm going to do the hash and then I'm going to do that. Oops, do that. Okay, so now that that's done, we now need to create the actual inner part of our header, of our menu. So we have created the wrapper around the header. Now let's create the inner part of our header. So this will be a constant as well. I will call it main menu. And this time it's going to call inner. And we'll just style it. And we'll call it a div tag. And then within that we create our style. Here we're going to write a few styles. So we'll say max dash width. The width will be 960 I think we did on the main. So we'll just stick with that. And then we'll say margin 0 and auto let's say. And let's say display to be flex here as well. So we'll say flex. And let's say a fixed width. So the width will be 960 as well. Pixels. And then we'll say height. Height will be 100%. Okay. So we have created that. Now let's create the link so we want the menu itself to have a style so we'll say give us another constant and we have a menu and we have menu item is equals to we'll say style this time it's not dot this time we need to open and put our link reference there because remember it's a link so in here, we now do our styling. First, we want it to be um, white, the text, because because the background color that I've got is a little orange, so we need it to be white. So we'll say color will be white. We want the display to be block, so it can fix. So we'll say block. And then we want it to have some pattern. So we'll say pattern let's say 15 pixels by 20 pixels let's say we'll check that later when we go live and we can fix them if it's not done properly so we'll just now create our constant which is the main query and where we're going to query our graph and um, our graphql main menu so we'll say another constant and this time we'll just call it main menu Okay, and then we'll just say it's equals to that, and then it will be that. And then we have in between that we need to write our static query. So static query, and then we need to bring in our query as well. And this will be a GraphQL query. So we'll say GraphQL. And within the GraphQL, we're going to now write our code. As you remember, I have memorized this, um, but you would probably have to write this all, all, all by one by one. So we'll bring in the main menu. So we'll have the, that as WordPress WP API menu, menu items. And within that, we need to filter it. So we'll say bracket. And within that, we're going to say, filter and then we're gonna now open and then we're gonna say the name of the filter and then it's gonna be equals to so we'll say equals to and then we can have that in a quotation mark and we're gonna call the menu so it's gonna be main menu that's the name of it and outside of it we can now start querying from there so just to confirm, we have our filter, and within the filter, it's going to be a name, and the name is going to be equal to the main menu. We can check this if it's correct by going back to our um, project. So if we just go back to our WordPress project for a second, just here, and go to menus, sorry, menus. Within menus, we can even copy it from here, and just paste it here if we're not sure paste it back here okay so now we have done this now we need to write our edge so edges 
Now we need to get our node. So we'll say node. We need to get our items. And within the items, we want the title. And then we want the slug. So this time the slug will be object underscore slug. Okay. And outside of the method, we want the name as well. So we get that name as well. So now that's done. Now let's render this. So we'll say render within that. Actually, let's just write in one line. So render, we have our props. And the props will be equals to that. And then in there, we're going to start. So actually, let's use the bracket rather than the... So within that, we're going to now write our, we're going to put our styles in and then we're going to query our uh, menu. So the first thing we do is we bring in the, the wrapper. And within the wrapper, we're going to bring everything within the wrapper. So then we bring in our main menu, the styles. So which is the main menu, the inner one. Oops. The inner and within the inner we're now gonna bring in the logo and then we need to bring in the, the the actual menu items so to do this we're gonna say bring in the props and the props will then bring in all WordPress so let's just go and just copy this just to make sure we don't make any spelling mistakes. This is most of the reason why I just copy and paste them because I'm not great at spelling, so I don't want to make a mistake of it. So zero, and then we get the node. Then we get the items. Then we map it. Because we need more than one, if you notice on the layout, when we were doing the favicon, we didn't do the map because we only needed one. On the menu, we're going to have to have the map because it's going to query more than one. Okay. So the map, within the map, we're going to want the item. And the item will be equal to, then we open our bracket. In there, we're going to bring the inner part. So we're going to bring the main menu item. Just to make sure the spelling is right on the main menu item. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So main menu item will be linked to. And then we're going to bring in the item dot the object. So as you can see, we bring in the edges. We bring in the node already. We bring in the items already. And we have created a new variable. So that variable will be equivalent to all of this. So we're just going to say item dot this log. Okay. So now I'll just paste that here. And then I'm going to create outside of that. I'm going to create a key, which is going to pick what we want. The name of it. So this will be the URL. This will be the Harif. Now we just want it to show a name. To show a name, we need to bring in the key. And the key will be the item title. So we'll say item dot this title. So just copy that again and paste that here. And then we close this. So we have closed all that. All that good. We've closed that. That's good as well. We've closed that. That's okay as well. Now we just need to close this here. So that there, and then we close that, and then bring in our export. Remember, you need to do the export all the time. Without the export, nothing will work. Main menu, okay. And then that's that's that. So we have our main menu as post. We have everything that we need. We got our query here. We got our styles, and we've imported. We haven't touched the style info yet. Don't worry about that for now. We'll get there later. So now the next is we have we need to do our logo now. So let's go to logo. Let's go and let's actually go and copy a few of the imports. So let's copy these three, which we will definitely need. So we'll go there and paste them here first. 
that within that we need to write do some styling here as well so we'll say the constant and we'll say the site logo and the wrapper in this time we'll say style dot the div tag and within the div tag we're gonna now going to write the flex so flex will grow and the, the flex grow will be one the color will be white and then we'll put a margin if you're not good with CSS you you can you can go to the um, online and get some styles or some bootstrap styles if you want so this is constant so we get the logo we'll style the logo as well so we'll say logo image oops we'll say logo image and then we'll say style dot image and this time we'll just put the style here we'll just put a max width so that the logo image cannot pass that width so we'll say max width will be equals to 100 pixels okay now we have done this now let's create our constant and query our logo so we have logo equals to that and within that we have uh, we open our curly brackets here after that curly bracket let's export export default and then we export the logo okay within that we need to now return so we'll return and within the return we'll query the static query so we'll say static query and we'll say query we'll go and get the graphql and within that we're going to write our wordpress so this again i mem i memorized it so we'll just write it so all wordpress wp logo just to make sure the spelling is right let's just check it and then within that we'll say edges and then it will be node and then you'll be we're looking for the ID first and then we want the URL within the URL we want the source underscore URL okay so our query is done let's render this this will be very similar to what we've done on the on the favicon side so it's almost the same but just the difference is this is going to be a logo so this will not need the helmet so here we'll say the props which will be equals to and then we'll bring our styles so the first style we'll bring we'll bring in just the wrapper so we'll say site wrapper and within the wrapper we'll bring the logo image which is the style okay and we'll bring in the source where the image is coming from it's gonna come from the props and the props will then come from all wordpress plugin all wordpress then it will then come from all wordpress wp logo dot it will come from edges and within edges we wanted to pick the first one which is zero then after that we'll say dot node dot url dot source underscore url okay and then just outside of it we'll put an alt so we just specify what the logo is for so we'll say main logo okay and outside of it we'll do that so we've created so let's just check the spelling all wordpress edges node url source url correct so now just out of here we'll close that and everything else seems to be okay so we have created our logo this will render our logo for us now i'll just save that now one more thing we need to do we need to bring in our site info 
So we decide info, we'll go and get the imports as well. So we'll just go back to the logo and copy that. Okay, and then come here and paste it there. So now that we have done this, we'll create our constant and do a few more styles as well on here. So we'll say site info wrapper and this will be a style dot div actually we need to put that together okay and that will be in here we'll have a flex grow as well so let's say flex dash grow and this will be one we'll have the color for this one as white as well and we have the margin as auto and zero okay then we have another constant and this time we call it site title let's put it together site title and this will be styled dot the div tag and within that we put another style we put a font width so we'll say font width so it will be weight and we'll just say bold bold now let's create our main query now so we'll say constant and the constant will be a site info and then we'll say it's equals to that and then that equals to we'll open our bracket and outside our bracket we'll do our export and it will be default and it will be site info okay now that we have this we'll create our static query so we'll say static and we'll go and get the query and we'll then query and that will be our GraphQL. So we'll say GraphQL. And the GraphQL will then have our styles. So in here, we're going to now bring in all WordPress site metadata. Because the metadata contains all the site information. So we'll bring in the metadata here. And within the metadata, we need a few more things. So we need the edges. We need the node, we need the name, and we need the description. Okay, so we have created that. Now we need to create, do our rendering now. So the render will be render. And now we need to create our props in it. So we say props, and the props will, props will be equals to now just inside it we press enter and then put everything in it the first thing we want is we want the site wrapper so we'll go and get the site wrapper just go and copy that just so it saves us time site wrapper close the site wrapper so now we need to bring in the site title so we'll just say that site title and within that we bring in the site title so now that we have the site title let's now bring in the props of the description i'm uh, sorry pro props of the name not the description because we're looking for the title so we'll say props dot and we'll go and get the wordpress so we'll say go press site metadata and then we'll paste it in here dot edges then it's the first one we want so it'll be zero and then just out of it we'll say dot node dot descript, uh, name this time so we have the name and then just outside of it we'll bring a div tag and this div tag will contain the the description part so we'll just go and copy that paste it here and then we'll just change this to what we have here so i'll just copy that and paste that here so that's all good so just outside here 
we'll just close that and then close that okay let's just check if we're missing anything because it's sure you know there's an error here so we'll first do check do our general check the GraphQL spelling is wrong so we'll just change that to GraphQL so we have fixed the issue so everything else seems to be okay so we'll just save that one as well so now that everything is done let's try and run our application and let's hope that there is no error that comes after that so we'll just say new terminal and just wait for it to come and then we'll say Gatsby develop so now as we can see there are some errors that we're having and it says there's two errors that we're having and one warning we're not going to concern ourselves too much with the with the warning first we're just going to concentrate on this one first so here the error is saying cannot query edges on type wordpress site meta connection so we need to check the site information to make sure that everything is correct on there so we'll first go to site info and within site info we need to check it, what we have make what we're having wrong on there so first we have our site meta description we have our edges we have a node and within node we have our name and description which seems to be okay but what it's saying is it's a spelling mistake if you can see here it's telling me do you mean edges so i'll just change that to edges which is correct now and then we have node which is correct let's just check that this is correct as well edges and let's just check if that's correct edges so we save that let's just go to the logo part and just make sure that these are all correct edges and that's edges as well so that's all sorted let's go to the menu just to check that menu spelling is correct as well edges and let's come here and check that that's correct as well we'll save that and let's go to the layout finally and check if that spelling is right as well and that one yeah so that's all correct site info edges metadata edges so everything seems to be okay to me now so i'm just gonna close my application and rerun it again okay let's just wait for it to run okay so seems more convincing now okay everything seems to be working fine the graphql seems to be okay let's just see if it finished building it okay great everything is working fine these warnings we don't need to con concern about ourselves about it a lot for now let's just run our application to make sure everything is okay so i'll just run my application okay so as we can see we're having some issues and the first issue is saying that we have an a constant style issue so this num this we're having this issue mainly because we haven't checked while we're designing so what we can do is we can go back to layout so we just go to layout and this is the issue that we're having at the moment it's saying so let's do some tweaks okay so we have global style so let's just change that word to style global style and let's just change that to that and let's just change that to create that so that's going to come in from here so that's all good and let's just check if everything is spelled properly here so we have global styles here so that's good so we just save that okay and just copy that and just make sure it's pasted there okay so we have just renamed we just call this global style as uppercase and we just made sure the upper every initial is been uppercased except the first one so which is okay we have that so everything seems to be okay here i'll just save this for a second and I'll just come back just to see if it's giving us still the same error. No, it's not giving us the same error. And everything seems to be great. So there's some issues. Okay, so first it brings us some stuff here, which is to bring us the logo. But because we have the logo as wide, so 
that's that. It didn't bring us the menu. So the first thing we're going to fix is we're going to go back to our WordPress and we're going to change the logo to something white so that we can see it properly. So we'll just say, go back to customize. So in here, we're going to now go and change our logo. So we'll just say change logo and we select a white logo and that's that. So we just open it just so that it can pick it and we crop it. So we have our white logo and we save that. So that's saved. Now what we do, we just close our application. So that's the old one. We'll just come back to our here. Just open that bigger. And then we'll just say control C, control C, just to close our application. And we run our application again. Okay. Again, just ignore the warnings for now. We'll get to that. So let's just click on that again. And then you can see that we have our logo now here. We can then fix this logo because it's too big, obviously. Now let's open Photoshop and reduce this image. So we'll just go and get the image from here, drag it to Photoshop. And I want to reduce this to, I want to reduce that to 150, let's say, pixels. So 150 pixels. I'll save this. I'll just export it again and I'll call it small dash logo. Okay, so within that, I'll go back to WordPress. And within WordPress, we're going to change the logo again. We're going to go and upload another logo. So we'll just go to wherever I have my logo. So you will probably have your logo wherever it is. If you already have your logo nice size, so you don't need to follow this one. I'm just trying to get a smaller logo. So I'll just open that and then crop that. So we have a nice small logo here. So we need to go back to our project again and rerun our project. So I'll just clear everything so that it can be nice and clean. So I'll close it down and then CLS to clear everything. Oh, CLS to clear everything. And then within that, we then run our application again. Okay, it's almost done. Okay, so we'll just click that one and go to here and check if everything is okay. Perfect. Everything is nicely done and it's all in there properly. Great. So we have that. Everything cool. Actually, also, if you notice, it picked up all the font that we have, all the open sound. So if I just inspect my header. So now that we have inspected our header, we can see that it's actually giving us the headers but it's not actually giving us the names of the headers. So to fix this, we first need to do, go back, go to our GraphQL and query our menu query that we have put in. So we'll just open GraphQL. I'll just reduce that. So we open menus. Within menus, we're just gonna copy everything and make sure that it's working fine. So we'll just paste that there and play that. Okay, so we have everything that we need. So let's just go back to our code and then we will just check if everything is okay. So we'll just open our project and within our project, we'll then start the query is fine. Everything goes fine. We've checked our rendering. The wrapper seems to be okay. Then we have our, our logo there, which seems to show fine. Then we have our edges node, which seems to be okay. We have our menu items and within the menu items, we have our slug. The slug is working perfectly fine. We have the key and we have the title. The title is what is not showing. So I think the reason why it's not showing is because of this. So if we just remove that and we press enter and now let's put something else. So let's say shows the item dot the title. Okay, and then let's close the menu. Okay, so let's save this. Let's go back to our project and refresh and just give it a second. So now that we have this here, now this is, we can see that the menu is there, everything is fine, but these width, the containers are very, very wide. We want it 
to have some padding and to be in the center to have a fixed width. So what we'll do, we'll come back to our application. And within our application, we need to do, we need to check our, our, our style to make sure everything is right. So the first thing is we need to put that comma here. And then we need to make sure that the margin is zero now. So we need to make sure it's important as well. So we just say space important and bring in the exclamation mark, which specified that is very important. And we do the same on this one as well. Okay. We'll save the style and we'll just make sure that everything is run and updated. And when we do that, we can see that everything else it's working fine. It's centered and it's giving us what we want. We come here, home page, home page is all centered and giving us what we want. We come to the borders, it's giving us what we want. And this is all fetching from there. But also, what we also have is we have a favicon as you can see there. And the favicon is having a title as well. Now, one more thing we need to do is we need to take these decorations out. We don't want the underline bit there. So what we'll do, we'll come back to our code and we go to the menu section. So I'm just going to close this, go to menus and within the menus, we're going to look for the inner one, which is the items. And then we'll just write text dash decoration and we'll set it to none and we'll save this. When we save this, we'll come back here and you can see that's removed. Okay. So now that that's all done, we have now created our header, which the is secondary logo from WordPress. We bring in our menus, which is coming from WordPress. We change the font to sans serif. We bring in the images from, we bring in our favicon. So before we start working on the portfolio and maybe work on the, the footer as well, Let's try and understand that we have a, um, if you just go back in the code, we have this, which is site information. So this site information will potentially pick up the metadata, which is the name and the description from WordPress. So some people will say, okay, I don't want the logo. I want this, I want this to be my company the name and the description here. So what you can do first, We'll just open the terminal and just make sure that we have no issue with our terminal. So I'll open the first one and see there's some warnings that we have. So let's just fix those warnings first. So the first warning will be the link. So if you see, it says link. So we'll just go and remove this link because we don't need it. We've removed the link, so we'll just save it and then close. Then we go back to the main menu. In the main menu, you can see that the site info is not used. So what we can do, we can bring in the site info. So we'll bring it here, just above here. So we'll say site info and we'll close it. So, but we don't want the site info and logo to all show because it's just going to make it messy. So I'll just remove that for now and save this. You will get another warning saying that the logo is not being defined. So we can remove that for a second so that we, uh, we run our application with no errors. So I'm just going to clear, I'm just going to stop the application, control C, and then clear everything in my terminal, which is CLS, and now run the application again. And just to make sure that we are running a clean application that has no warnings and errors. Okay, great. Everything seems to be perfectly fine. Okay. Okay, so everything seems to be good. If you just go back to a browser, you can see that it has brought our application for us. It's telling me this is about me and this is our Gatsby project WordPress headless. I actually like it. We'll just, re we'll just leave it like that for now. I will just ignore the logo part at the moment. So now that this is done, let's put our footer in. We'll go back to our project and in our project, I'll just stop everything because and then just close that. And within components, I'll go to my project and I'll just minimize everything. I'll close everything so that it's clean and I'll come back here. I'll go to components and I'll create another one. So we have our main menu, which contains a header part. We're just going to create another component. And this time it's going to be the footer. So we'll say footer 
dot js okay so this for that now we'll just import a few things actually we can just go and import a few things so we'll just import these two just go copy them import them so now that this imports are done we are not going to do a lot of styling on the footer we just wanted to show something so the quickest way of doing this is we'll just export something out and we'll just default we'll default it to and then after that we'll have that and then we'll open our bracket and within that bracket we can just bring out div and within the div tags we can just say copyright 2020 dot about me ltd dash name consulting okay we'll just close that and save that and that's saved we have our compo we have a footer component we'll come to layout.js file and we'll import the file so we'll say import and it will be footer and we'll say from and it's gonna come from dot slash footer okay so that's done we'll just come now here and say footer okay now that that's done we just need to change that spelling yeah correct save that and let's try and run our application okay it's telling us that the props is not defined because we imported the props we don't worry about that for now let's just make sure that everything is working so as you can see we have our footer here now so now as you can see we have our footer now here however it's just on the left corner we want to introduce a bit of styling but to save us time with the styling what we can do we can actually take this this the whole component and bring it in the within the wrapper or we can actually create our own style like we did here actually let's do that let's go and create our own style and we'll come to main menu and we're going to copy everything within the main menu here okay so we'll come back here and just after there we paste this now we need to do something quick here we need to import another thing we need to import the style and then it need to come from style component yeah and we need to remove these props because we're not going to use these props so we just remove it completely okay now we have the main we'll just change this menus to footer main footer and main footer inner we we'll remove this link because we don't we don't need it we'll just keep this two for now and we'll save everything yeah everything seems to be fine so we'll just go back here and then run it again and as you can see we have a whole background here however we want to have this colored and it's white so that it can look better so what we can do we can come back to our footer so let's create another constant here so we'll say constant and we'll call it this time footer content footer content and footer content will then be style paragraph we'll call it so style p and within that style p we'll put our style what we want we want it to be white so we'll say color white then we'll come back here to our paragraph in the paragraph we'll just remove that and paste that one there remove that and paste that and then save it go back to your browser you can see that it's white everything seems to be fine so now we have our footer we have a header that's fine 